Well, hello, welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. It's a milestone for JD, 300, the big 300, just at 300 hours, which means that JD is due for some service time. Now, I remember back when I hit the big 300 that that was a pretty critical time for me when I started thinking about what did I accomplish and what do I yet have to accomplish. But for now, let's get this service out of the way. 200 hours is technically what it's going to be since I last serviced it. I did it at 100 hours. JD is a 2018 1025R from John Deere. And the 2017 models, if you looked in their manual, it said to do a full service after 50 hours. When I got my 2018 in my manual, it said to do a full service after 200 hours. I thought that was a little bit long for a break-in period for a tractor, so I did a full service at 100 hours, and now at 300, I'm gonna do another full service on it. So why don't you have a little birthday cake, stick around and check it out. So when I did my first 100 hour service, I got all my fluids and filters from greenfarmparts.com. It came with everything that I needed fluid wise and filter wise, except for one filter and I'll talk about that in a second. But basically everything is John Deere High Guard, John Deere Oil, John Deere Filters. It all comes in one package. You decide which tractor you have, go on there. They have kits that are made for various tractors, various years. With my particular tractor, there are two types of air filters. There's a longer air filter, and then this, I have the shorter filter. It's two stages, so there's an interior filter that goes inside of this exterior one. And then everything else is pretty much standard. One thing the kit did not come with, and that is the small fuel filter that is located underneath the running board, which is on it by your left foot if you were sitting in the tractor. This is uh, always a little bit of a pain to change. The first time I did service, the 100 hour service, I did not change it and the filter doesn't look that great right now. So I'm gonna change it this time around, but I hear a lot of horror stories where you get a lot of fuel leaking out of there if you don't clamp things off right. Just wanna be careful when you clamp those fuel lines. So the kit comes with four gallons of transmission hydraulic oil. It comes with three quarts of engine oil. It'll come with the associated filters with it. So you're gonna have your engine oil filter and then a hydraulic fluid filter. It also comes with the small main fuel filter that you find under the hood, your two air filters, your inside one and outside one. And then besides just using a grease gun to grease all your fittings, I have a loader and I have a backhoe. Well, there's quite a few fittings involved with those and there's a few other fittings on the tractor itself you need to take care of. But check it out at greenfarmparts.com and they certainly have way more than just the fluids and filters that you need. You can get all kinds of tractor parts if you need to replace certain parts of your tractor. Check them out first. If you're looking at saving a little bit of money on this service, I did uh, look around at some of the local areas what they would charge for this 200 hour service now and it is anywhere from 450 to around $500. So you can save yourself a good chunk of change if you do it yourself and we'll just kind of go over the steps here real quick first thing you're going to want to do is uh, start up your engine and get it warmed up probably going to want to run this for about a minute you don't want it too hot so you don't burn yourself when you're draining the oil out I always like to start off a little bit quick and simple, try to keep my hands clean as long as I can. For now, the loader being up is a little bit easier to get access into here and take off this panel. So to remove this air filter, you pull out this orange slot here, just a slight twist and it comes straight out. When you put it back in, it's a little bit more difficult to put it back in and line up. Looks like it's seen 200 hours. This one does not look terrible. You don't have that right twist in it and you put the slot back in first off you can't get it in there there we go 
I find it simpler if you get all your tools gathered up so you're not running back and forth through your toolbox. Get everything all together. For changing the oil, I'm going to use a 17 millimeter socket. That fits the best. I have a rubber mallet just in case I need a little bit of persuasion. I know it's kind of hard to take off last time. This is the oil filter wrench for the smaller engine filter. Some rubber gloves. I'll probably only be wearing one at a time because I'll be uh, messing with the cameras and it's a lot easier. I want to keep one hand clean when I start and stop different cameras and move them to different positions. I remembered this was a little tough getting off last time, so the rubber mallet helps. You can force it with brute strength, but a lot of times when it breaks free, you end up hitting a knuckle or something, so it's a little bit easier using the mallet. Having a cab on hasn't impeded anything yet, but it did make the panel a little bit harder to get off and it makes some things a little bit tighter to get to. Oil filter is not that bad. It's right next to the dipstick here, but it is in tight quarters. Okay, so these three-cylinder Yanmar engines are probably used in more applications than just the John Deere 1025R. And I've always seen a lot of comments about uh, where do you fill the oil at. And if you look down here, there's an oil fill here in orange. And then on top of the engine, there's another one right there for oil. And either one will fill the oil. It's just what's easier for you to get to. Now, when I put the uh, cab on, this line is used for the heater for inside the cab. So that line is directly in the way of this. I think last time when I put oil on this, I ended up using the side port over here. And it seems like that's going to be the easiest for me right now. All right, for me, it's going to be easier to use a funnel over here. It might be a little bit tricky. I have all my quarts of oil all lined up and open so I don't have to go back and get anything. So we'll start out, we'll put about two and a half quarts in there and we'll see where we're at. Okay, that's a one. That is two. This is usually where I end up putting too much oil in. Looks like it's going to take three quarts, which is okay because that means I can empty out my oil pan into these containers. All right, well, I'll let some of this stuff just kind of drip and settle, and then I can put the remainder in the pan back into this container. I'll start working on the fuel filter. fuel filter is a little tricky to begin with. Now that um, I have the cab on, this is technically like, let's say it's the firewall for the cab. The heater lines run through here, and this wasn't here last time. I turned the petcock back on because it's kind of in my way to get this loose, but you really don't want to have a tight grip on these channel locks because you will probably bind it more so you just want enough grip that you can turn this and it isn't that easy especially with the uh, firewall there i cut the bottom of a water bottle and put that underneath because you're going to spill fuel no matter what you do it's going to catch some of it but you're still going to spill some fuel
to show you how this looks and then there is a spring and this little ring in here is supposed to float if you get water in your fuel and if you get water in this filter this red ring will start to float up a little bit definitely want to get the threads right putting this back on Then when you want to refill this, you need to turn your key. Don't start the tractor because it will just stall out. And if you look, you can see the fuel going up. Last time I changed it, it stalled out about a second or two after it started. This time it just ran rough for about 5-10 seconds. So we're halfway done. I need to do the hydraulic fluid. I need to do the hydraulic filter. And then that small little fuel filter that gives some, everybody so much trouble. But I think that large one that I just changed uh, gives me quite a bit of trouble too. I was debating on whether or not to try to leave the backhoe on, but looking at it more and more, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to take it off to make it easier to get to that rear plug for the hydraulic fluid to drain it out. I'm also going to try to retract all my cylinders as much as I can to see if I get as much of that hydraulic fluid out of the cylinders and back into the tank there. I didn't do that last time and I don't know if anybody else even thinks about that but I'm going to try it and see what happens see if I get more fluid out of it than what I remember last time. Here's the location of the drain plug for your hydraulic fluid right by the right rear tire. Let that drain for a little while. So we're primarily concerned about this bolt right here. That's just going to loosen this tube that goes down to the hydraulic screen filter. So if you loosen this bolt, it'll make this so you can shift it back and forth. And then down here towards the base of that tube, you have your rubber hose right here. This is where the screen is. And if you loosen this, you should just be able to pop this out and slide that screen out. Now I got a little bit more room now because I have spacers on my tires, but even before I had the spacers, I was able to do this. And this is a 2018, so I imagine from 2018 on it should be no problem. I'm not sure if it's any different for a 2017. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but that screen should slide right out once you clear it a little bit. Hardly anything on the screen compared to the first time when I changed this. I had much more metal shavings on it. Get the magnet out. I kind of had to do this motion. Kind of like bringing the temperature down on an old-fashioned thermometer. Then the last thing before putting hydraulic fluid in is changing that hydraulic fluid filter. I used some channel locks to get it off. It wasn't too bad. Maybe stained a little bit from some of the leftover oil, but this hydraulic fluid looks a little dirtier than the first time I changed it at 100 hours. Alright, the dreaded fuel filter underneath the floorboard. I can see why a lot of people don't want to change this. I was easily able to move the clips here on the right of the filter with no problem, but the clips on the left were hidden between the tractor and the top of the fuel line, so it's hard to get to. I was afraid to try just pulling on one side of the clip because I thought I would bend it and break it, and then this project would much be a much longer project having to go to the tractor supply store. So it was a little bit of a pain to try to get it in the right position so I could loosen that up and move it over. Next I started trying to loosen up the tubes on both sides a little bit using a screwdriver and then trying to twist the whole filter in circular motion and rotate it and I was able to do that but there wasn't a lot of room in the fuel line to retract it. Now if you've done this before leave a comment below on how you made out and what you did and what little trick you might have used. I ended up taking a wrench and removing the bolt that holds the clip behind the filter here that would give me a little bit more slack with working with the fuel line. Okay, you definitely need to do that. It gives you a little bit more slack, 
but the next thing here was getting the fuel line off of the filter and once I got it off everything went out the window. <laughs> So I got a good shower of diesel fuel, my camera got a shower of diesel fuel, and <laughs> now I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to get out of this situation. I do have the other filter nearby. Okay, so I quickly wanted to clean that mess up. I put the uh, filter back together, put that clamp back on that was holding the two fuel lines together there and then I just wanted to uh, not worry about the cameras or anything so I could quickly get that taken care of, go in the house, wash my hands. I actually had uh, diesel fuel soaked up to my sleeves here so I got took off my jacket. All that stuff is airing out in the garage right now. Tomorrow we'll throw that in the laundry. Took a quick shower, came back in here and just kind of finished mopping up the job. I put some oil dried down. But from what I remember reading that people did say that they got a lot of fuel all over the place. And I thought I could be quick and I thought I could probably just, you know, put my finger and occlude one end and, and keep a lot of fuel from coming out. And that just was not the case. It turned out to be a mess. So if you're going to try to change that little filter underneath the floorboards, I recommend you clamping that off with something. I have some hemostats from when I used to work on the fire department and I could not find them. I looked all over the place for them. And I had some others that were almost too small. I thought it would cut into the rubber hose of the fuel line itself and gouge into the hose. But I couldn't find them. Thought I could do it really quick and that was not the case. So if you're gonna change that filter, I recommend you clamping both ends off, taking that little fuel line guard that's under there that's keeping it clamped up to the floorboard so you get some room to play with, giving that a try. So hopefully you learned from my lesson. I didn't tackle it when I first did the 100 hours, but I tackled it now, and I don't know if I'm going to tackle it again for the next 200 hours. Maybe I'll wait for 400 hours to come around. And then lastly, we'll be going around and just greasing all the fittings here. I have a loader. Most of you probably have a loader, so you know that you should grease these about every 10 to 12 hours especially if you do a lot of loader work. I also have the back on the back. That has a lot of grease fittings also that need to be 10 too. So I just used it not that long ago when I was digging for our septic test down in Southern Ohio. And then the toughies I think are underneath the tractor itself. You have a couple in a drive shaft. There's one that's really hard to get to. And it's helpful if you have one of these, a little needle attachment to get up into so thank you to greenfarmparts.com this is the second time i've used them for my maintenance service the last time was uh, 200 hours ago this time i reached out to them and they were kind enough to send me everything you would get when you were doing your 200 hour package so a little shout out to them still really raining out there the wind's really picking up weather's getting kind of crappy i'm going to finish just cleaning stuff up here in the general area but I appreciate everybody watching. Hope you enjoy and subscribe to these videos. Click on that little bell when you want to know when a new one is coming out. And keep an eye on us.